Do you know if a ship is going through the sea and the sailors need to stop in the middle, how will they do that? They will throw in the anchor in the seabed that will stop the sea's movement. So this phenomenon, the anchor stopping the ship is known as anchorage. In this video, we are going to discuss about anchorage in orthodontics. So anchorage is defined as resistance to unwanted tooth movement. So let's understand this with this example that in this example you can see presence of a central incisor that is outside the arch and we need to bring it in the arch with help of the orthodontics. So here the wanted tooth movement is the tooth coming back in the arch but for bringing it back in the arch we need to take support from other teeth. This other teeth which are providing support for the required tooth movement are the anchors. In this case, where you are trying to move the tooth back in, if the anchors move, that is known as unwanted tooth movement. So, doing or getting the wanted tooth movement with resistance of the anchor teeth is known as anchorage. So, here the anchor teeth will bring the tooth back in the arch. Graeber defined anchorage as a nature and degree of resistance to displacement which is op offered by the anatomical unit when it is used for purpose of affecting the tooth movement. So source of anchorage can be intraoral or extraoral. The intraoral sources include the alveolar bone, teeth, basal bone, cortical bone and musculatures. Whereas the extraoral sources they include cervical region, occiput, forehead or chin you get anchorage from this extraoral regions anchorage can be classified based on the manner of force application into simple stationary and reciprocal kind of anchorage let's see them one by one so let's see this example where you have the molar and when you have the canine now you want to retract this canine and for doing so you want to take support from the molar but in this case if you are going to use the molar as anchorage along with the retraction of canine it will also cause tipping kind of movement on the molar as well right so the kind of anchorage that will resist the tipping movement of the anchorage unit and it will get the required tooth movement done this kind of anchorage is known as simple anchorage okay so simple anchorage is resistance to tipping of the anchorage unit utilized to retract the other teeth let's see the example so movement of a single tooth using the screw appliance so here you can see this tooth is present palatally can be seen here also now we can use a screw placed over here this screw will get anchorage from all the other teeth and when you open the screw when you increase the space over here it will push this tooth into the arch right now it is outside the arch so in this case this force is provided by the anchor teeth which is all the other teeth this force will push the tooth back to the arch so here the resistance to tooth movement is of tipping type so the tipping type of tooth movement is resisted by this anchor teeth and ultimately the desired tooth movement is achieved this kind of anchorage is known as simple anchorage the other example for simple anchorage is hollis appliance where you can see you want to retract this teeth back to the arch okay so in this case also the posterior teeth will act as anchorage and they will be resisting the tipping kind of tooth movement and ultimately they'll retract the teeth back in the arch so this is also an example of simple anchorage right now let's see another scenario where when the molar is trying to retract this canine in that case when retracting it it starts showing bodily movement okay so type of resistance which will resist the bodily movement of the anchor unit and in doing so it will cause retraction of the canine in this case or uh, or the required tooth movement this kind of anchorage is known as the stationary anchorage now some books say that stationary anchorage does not exist in the 
intraoral kind of appliances because all of them are going to show some or other kind of movement right let's understand this uh, stationary anchorage with help of this example here we can see that the anterior the maxillary anterior are present in the procline stage so in this case what we can do is we can bend this sorry we can use the elastics to join them to this mandibular molar so this can be seen in this example where the elastic band is used to connect the anterior teeth to the mandibular molar in doing so it will pull the teeth pull the maxillary anterior teeth back into their normal position this is achieved by resistance to the bodily movement by the mandibular molar so this is example of stationary anchorage and another kind of anchorage is reciprocal anchorage where you see that two teeth or two set of the teeth they move in an equal extent in the opposite direction equal and opposite movements are seen let's see them with the example first example is midline diastema closure using the elastic so here you can see these two incisors are there in between them there is presence of the space this is midline diastema so in this case what we can do is we can apply elastic on both of them and once this elastic uh, it is activated what it will do it will pull them closer and this equal and opposite direction will help in closing the diastema right this kind of anchorage is known as reciprocal anchorage another example of reciprocal anchorage is cross bite elastics so we usually know that in the occlusion the maxillary molar is present buccal to the mandibular molar but sometimes there will be presence of cross bite so in that case what we can do is we can use the cross bite elastic which is as you can see here that it is applied to palatal side of the maxillary molar and buccal side of the mandibular molar this elastic what it will do it will cause the equal and opposite direction force on both the teeth ultimately leading to bringing the tooth to their normal position this kind of anchorage is reciprocal anchorage another example of reciprocal anchorage is seen in the coffin spring or rapid maxillary expansion both of them are going to cause maxillary expansion the coffin spring is a removable appliance and this rme is a kind of fixed appliance although it is not definitely a fixed appliance but it is causing a rapid kind of expansion the coffin spring is will compared to rme will cause slower expansion per, but basically both of them what they are doing they are pushing the palatal house into different direction and ultimately it will cause expansion of the maxilla as you can see here so this was the reciprocal anchorage another way of classifying anchorage is intramaxillary and intermaxillary intramaxillary anchorage is when the anchorage unit and the tooth being moved both of them are present in the same jaw as we had seen in this example whereas in the intermaxillary anchorage the anchorage unit and the teeth being moved both of them are present in the different jaws so this is the intermaxillary anchorage another way you can classify anchorage is based on the number of anchorage units used based on that we'll classify them as single anchorage compound anchorage and reinforced anchorage so single anchorage is type of anchorage also known as primary anchorage where the tooth to be moved is placed against the single tooth only but the single tooth which is being used as the anchorage has greater alveolar support as compared to the tooth which is being moved so here you can see mandibular molar is used as anchor to cause movement of the mandibular premolar next type of anchorage is compound anchorage where more than one teeth are used to cause movement of more than one teeth but the teeth that are being used as anchorage has greater alveolar support as compared to the teeth which are being moved in this example you can see use of the loop mechanics to cause retraction of the anteriors so the posterior teeth are acting as anchorage and they are helping in causing retraction of the anterior teeth as you can see in this animation okay next is reinforced anchorage these are the type of anchorage where the anchorage units are reinforced by the use of more than one type of resistance units the examples are use of headgear where extra oral support is taken or transpalatal arch where you are taking support of the palate or 
in the cases of canine retraction usually what we do we bend the maxillary first molar to cause retraction of this canine but to get extra support you can also bend another molar that is second molar so first and second molar together causing retraction here is example of reinforced type of anchorage extra oral anchorage can be taken by the sources present outside the oral cavity they can be headgear now this headgear are of three types as you can see here the parietal headgear or high pull headgear cervical or low pull headgear and the occipital or reverse pull headgear okay we can also use face mask now this face mask see the two different types this is a padded kind of face mask where the forehead cap and the chin cup they are joined through a single road whereas in the delayer type of face mask you have forehead cap and the chin cup which are connected through this squarish framework okay this is difference between the delayer and padded face mask this can be asked to you in an exam as a image based mcq also so you should be able to answer based on this next is phenomenon that is known as anchorage loss so as the newton's third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that is when you are trying to cause tooth movement with help of anchorage definitely there are going to be some kind of movement taking place in the anchor tooth although it is undesirable but it is bound to happen this is known as anchorage loss so if you are taking support of this molar to cause retraction of this canine so in that case where the canine is being retracted you are going to see some kind of movement in the anchor tooth that is molar also this is known as anchorage loss now this anchorage loss can be of two types one is mesial anchorage loss where there is mesial movement of the molar teeth when you are trying to retract anterior tooth okay this is the unwanted mesial movement another type of and another important type of anchorage loss is vertical or transverse anchorage loss here what will happen when taking support from the the anchor tooth and you are trying to move another tooth instead of doing mesial movement or in addition to the mesial movement of the anchor tooth there will also be vertical or transverse movement taking place of the anchor tooth what it will do it will cause extrusion of the posterior teeth which were providing the anchorage and ultimately it will lead to backward rotation of the mandible so in both the cases the anchorage loss where either it is mesial or vertical in most of the cases it is not desirable vertical is not at all desirable in any of the cases the mesial anchorage loss can be depending on the condition be desirable this we will see next so that is known as the anchorage requirement anchorage requirement classifies the anchorage requirement into maximum anchorage moderate anchorage and minimum anchorage here they are classifying based on that how much of the movement of the anchorage tooth should be allowed in the maximum anchorage there should be minimum anchorage loss that means there should be minimum movement of the anchor tooth so let's see this with an example that here let's see that second premolar is extracted so you have the first premolar and the mandibular first molar so in the cases when there is maximum anchorage in that case is when you are trying to move the premolar with the help of anchor being the mandibular molar the max to max movement of this molar that can be allowed is no more than 1/4 of the extraction space so if this was the extraction space in between them less than 1/4 of that space only is allowed for this molar to move into that area okay then you have moderate kind of anchorage in the moderate anchorage anchorage teeth can be allowed to move up to the uh, in the extraction space up to 1/4 to 1/2 of the total extraction space okay so it can go up to here and in the cases of minimum anchorage the anterior teeth can be allowed sorry the anchor teeth can be allowed to move forward more than half of the total extraction space this is known as anchorage being minimum that is minimum anchorage required okay so that's all from this video on anchorage if you have any doubts feel free to post in the comment section all the best thanks for watching the video don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates